Hi, and welcome back to Gavin Sonic's B. Well, I'm continuing on the uh, on the baffle, and uh, the second side is almost done. So uh, started off with the red side, uh, the red side, the right side, and uh, I'm now doing the left side, and I'm almost there. The last little bit is a little pain in the ass to get in, and. Uh, I'll show you what I've done. So, this part, I started at 10 o'clock this morning. It's now 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I did stop for some lunch. Um, this part here took two hours to basically uh, fit it um, to the engine. Uh, the... Uh, supplied part didn't really coincide with uh, the way the engine was uh, too well so I've had to cut file um, profile um, particularly down this side here to get it to come far enough to the uh, left to meet up with this part um, I think it's actually probably further left as we look at it right on the aircraft than uh, it would normally be because I notice it's slightly tighter on the um, Jubilee clips there than on the other side but I'm talking a few millimeters maybe five millimeters <laughs> um, uh, this part no problem at all working out what happened here um, took a bit of doing uh, it's not the same as in the manual in the well I say the manual in the photographs um, if we look at the photographs here uh, can't remember where it is now it's around here somewhere that's the left hand side there we go it's basically a different shape and there we go that's what the photograph is and actually uh, it comes straight down here and then across um, rather than a lip like the other side. I don't know why they've changed it. Um, it's, uh, it's a bit of a puzzle to me but um, that's why we've got these two funny pieces the bit that looks like a spanner head goes in there and then that funny little tiny piece actually goes down the back and um, bridges between this part and this part and encircles the the other side of the exhaust but i notice that there's a huge great hole through the back here um, which kind of defeats the point um, so I'm going to have to bend up a little piece of metal and fill that hole in um, it's about a half an inch I suppose slot um, which the air can quite easily escape from so um, I'll busy away and make that up in the not too distant future coming round to the front we've got the one that I showed you before which has the hole cut in it for the dipstick there's the bit that bridges underneath the um, shaft engine um, crankshaft and then we're back to this side so I've used all the parts and uh, they're all clear code in place apart from the little bridging bit um, between there and underneath which I've actually got no idea how I'm going to do that because uh, uh, it's in behind there and I to locate some holes is going to be quite difficult but anyway I'm sure it's not impossible and uh, we'll get round to it so that's where I am at the moment and uh, it's taken a few hours uh, what is it 10 11 12 1 
yeah I've probably spent five hours on it today um, to get round to the front again so it's probably about the same as I did yesterday actually on the first side so 10 hours in total to uh, to actually fit the the parts onto the engine and drill and click them anyway more later well a few days have passed and uh, I've not been able to do uh, much uh, to the aircraft due to life and other bits and pieces getting in the way but today I've got the afternoon and uh, I've come back out here to try and make some more progress so uh, when I saw you at the end of the last uh, part of the video um, I was just finishing off uh, the fence baffle fitting it before trimming it um, and I had to make a little filler piece to go in and I have done that so it now looks a little like this and you can see that you can't get your finger through that hole anymore and I have managed to fit the bit that goes you can just see the bottom of it there it goes up the back of the uh, exhaust pipe bridging between those two parts there I've also cut and uh, just temporary clear code in place the four mounting brackets uh, there's two on each side fairly simple to uh, to cut and make up and they're in place you can just see the other one down the back there I've also cut the holes for the air intakes I've got to trim um, the this part um, because it is just poking out into that hole there um, I've cut the hole for the breather I'm probably going to increase the size of it and then put a silicon grommet in there um, there's the hole this side which again needs trimming on this part um, you can see the hole there and so it's pretty much uh, there I've also cut the hole for the uh, oil tube to go through um, it has to be quite big because the nuts got to go through it unless you fit the end uh, or flare the end after you've put it in here but to be honest if you've ever got to take it apart that nut's got to go through that hole so how we're going to seal that hole up is another thing but um, I will come up with a plan at some point uh, so that's pretty much it done the next thing to do is to trim the top edge um, to fit underneath the cowling so I've also been out and got the cowlings down from the loft um, and the drawing for the cowling uh, installation and uh, one of the first things you've got to do is to make a uh, an alignment spacer and uh, when it's fitted in place it goes where the propeller would normally be and um, allows you to position the front edge of the cowling um, reasonably accurately now when I was looking at this I thought well actually I can probably make a better um, job of it so I've actually um, proposing to make one with a, a lip on it so that the cowling actually sits down on on the lip and maintains the exact um, distance um, away from the hub all the way around um, so uh, as I probably said before I thought well I'm not very good at woodwork I much prefer metal um, but uh, you're supposed to make this out of a piece of wood um, and as I say, I'm not really good at making things out of pieces of wood I don't have a lot of woodworking tools or um, saws or gadgets um, for wood so um, I thought I've got a 3d printer upstairs why don't I use that and hey presto here it is I designed it on the uh, fusion 360 program 
and printed it out it took a while to uh, to print out about two and a half hours i think it was i've done it in abs because it's hard and uh, it fits on a little bit like this so there's the hub and uh, it fits on and then just give it a bit of a shove back and it's a good tight fit on there perfectly aligned it has the holes ready to um, screw the through to the um, cowling um, going to put a little bolt through there just to hold it in place although actually it doesn't need it it's such a good fit and then on the back of it I've got the lip for the cowling to sit on and uh, I don't think I can do this with one hand so I'm going to go and get the top cowling put it on and show you what it looks like in uh, so as if by magic here it is so there's the um, spacer adapter plate whatever you'd like to call it um, in position and bolted securely in place and you can see that it's holding the front of the cowling very nicely central and perfectly round the outside of the um, plate that I made and that is exactly the same diameter as the propeller hub um, so we know that when the propeller goes on there it's going to be a good fit the um, spacer is holding it back and also uh, central as well um, but of course cool, that really makes my camera go funny um, it's the LED lights that I've got up in the uh, ceiling and so we can see that uh, at the moment this is sitting on top of the um, baffle on that side I think and it's not quite sitting on the baffle on that side but I think it's sitting on something around about there now the conundrum is how do I mark out the uh, <laughs> the baffle and trim it to get this to sit down and well, and in actual fact I need a half inch gap between the top of the baffle and the underside of uh, of the top cowling and uh, I've been giving this some thought and I've kind of got an embryonic plan in my head I'm going to find out where it works this afternoon but I think I'm going to have to make something that follows the contour of the um, the cowling that I can use uh, to basically check where the cowling would normally uh, be. But I know I'm not explaining it very well. Um, what I would really like is one of those things that has lots of um, a profiler, if, uh, if you know what I mean, which uh, is like a, um, a central spine with a load of little wires going across that can slide backwards and forwards and you pop it down on something and it follows the contour of, the, uh, of whatever it is you place it against. I could do with like a giant one of those but I haven't got one so I'm going to have to be a bit creative with some wood um, some metal and some screws and uh, kind of make something that approximates to where the underside of that cowling actually is take the cowling off and then use that to work out where the shape that the um, baffle needs to be and then take it down half an inch from there I don't know whether that sounds easy or difficult but 
that's the only way I can think of doing it. Originally, it on the A model, they had the cowlings split left and right, not top and bottom. And of course, it was a lot easier to to do this on a split cowling that split vertically, um, because you can offer the cowling up and still get access into the area you need to get to from the other side um, and you can literally see where it's touching and where it's not touching you can't do that with this way of there is no way of really getting up under there and uh, getting in amongst it so interesting um, I've also got to work out a way of trimming the rear edge um, because obviously you can't see where the where the um, firewall is underneath this part the windshield surround um, but somehow you've got to profile that as well an easier job I think um, because uh, I notice it's it's not sitting on the aircraft absolutely square either but it should be easier to do that bit uh, because we can actually measure that transpose the far front edge of the firewall onto the top of here mark it out in pencil and then cut back to that and then hopefully it just drops in but who knows because <laughs> of course uh, the reason you have to do that is that this bit needs to be under that bit so anyway i'll keep you posted i'm going to spend the afternoon uh, trying to do that and see what happens uh, this is in variance with of course the uh, the instructions which say to do the bottom cowling first um, but i can't see that this can go anywhere else but attached to the wind uh, to the windows uh, windscreen surround at, at the back and uh, there so that's fixed that's fixed so uh, it can't go anywhere else um, so I can't see a downside to actually uh, trimming this up and getting it um, at least trimmed front and aft the sides I have no idea about um, but uh, and then we'll have a good look at getting that in place um, which I, I don't think it's going to be too difficult although we've got to cut it around a number of pipes and things that are sticking out of the bottom of the aircraft um, but uh, as I always say more later.